Can I hear a good amen? amen? One Bible scholar wrote, keep your eyes on Zion. That's Israel. God's holy land. As the Jew goes, so goes the world. The Jews are God's yardstick, God's outline, God's blueprint for what he is up to in the rest of the world. Israel is the only country in the world that still has its same name, is located in the same land, and speaks the same language that it did 3,000 years ago. No other land can make claim to that. Israel has the lowest geographic point on earth. The Dead Sea is about 1,300 feet below sea level and lies at the southern end of the Jordan Valley. And its water, by the way, is 8.6 times saltier than any body of water on the face of the earth. You can't drown in the Dead Sea. You float like a cork. It's a tourist attraction. People go down there and think there's healing qualities, and there are some. The Mount of Olives in Israel is the oldest continually used cemetery in all of the world. The first computer from IBM was designed by Jews in Israel. The first cell phone was invented in Israel. Voicemail technology was invented in Israel. The USB memory sticks we use were invented in Israel. The most famous location app, Waze, was invented by Jews in Israel. The Iron Dome, many of you have heard of that. It's a mobile air defense system that stops short and long-range missiles and a list of military weaponry and technology that is unmatched by any nation, including our own, was invented in Israel, not yesterday, but a long time ago. Every day, over a thousand bombs and rockets on average are fired by Israel's enemies into their nation and the Iron Dome protects them like the wings of Almighty. God. The same could be said of medicines, medical technology. Most of you have heard of bear medicines and bear aspirin. One of the giants in the medical world historically, he was Jewish. Most major high-tech companies, Google, Apple, Intel, Microsoft, all have significant presences in Israel. But I want to close by showing you three things in the Bible that every single student of Scripture must know. And I hope you're taking notes on this. The average person has less than a 23% retention rate. Intelligent people only retain about 23% of what they hear. Your pencil has a 100% retention rate. Your iPad has a 100% retention rate. And I think I just heard my wife in my right ear say, slow down. I'll do my best. Number one. Israel is the most important land in Bible prophecy in the world. You'd listen to a lot of false prophets on social media. You would think America is the most important nation in the world. You'd think God is sitting in heaven waiting to see who we vote in to be president. You would think God is twiddling his thumbs in heaven and frantically wondering whether it's going to be a Democrat or Republican. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but America is suspiciously absent from Bible prophecy. There are 15 specific nations mentioned in Bible prophecy. America is not one of them. I don't know exactly what will happen to America because the Bible is silent on it, but there are three biblical principles that give possibilities as to what will happen to America. But one thing I can tell you for an absolute is after the rapture of the church and the dust of the trauma and the chaos of the rapture settles on this globe, America is not present. She certainly is no longer Israel's best friend because after the dust settles, after the rapture, the Bible is very clear that Israel's best friend is the Antichrist. That one world leader puppeted by Satan arises out of the dust of world chaos and becomes the first politician in history to sign a successful treaty with Israel seven years in duration, and America's not present at the table. Listen to a message I've preached entitled, What Will Happen to America in the Last Days? There's only three biblical possibilities for that. So Israel is the most important land in the Bible and Bible prophecy and the world. 
Did you know that Israel is the absolute geographic center of the world? Do you think that's accidental? That of all of the land masses on the face of the earth, Israel happens to be the geographic center of the world, strategically located at the hub of three continents. Listen to what Ezekiel, the prophet, said in the Old Testament in the fifth chapter, in the fifth verse. This is what the sovereign Lord says. This is an illustration of what will happen to Jerusalem. I placed her at the center of all nations. And most people have no idea as to how small Israel is. This diminutive land called Israel is only 8,630 square miles. Or for an American, it's smaller than New Jersey. There's only three U.S. states that are smaller than Israel. Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Delaware. That's how small it is. Israel, as a nation, could fit into Alaska 77 times. The population of Israel currently is about 8.7 million, growing at somewhat of an accelerated pace with the Russian invasion of Ukraine. 6.5 6.5 million of those are Jews, 1.8 million of those are Arabs, and other nationalities are less than 4%. Did you know that God made an everlasting covenant with Abraham and his descendants and gave them this land called Israel? Open with me to Genesis chapter 15 and verse 18, Genesis 15 and 18. So the Lord made a covenant with Abram that day and said, I have given this land to your descendants all the way from the border of Egypt to the great Euphrates River. In this passage, God made an everlasting covenant, an irrevocable contract with Abraham, and he said this contract is irrevocable, eternal, and unconditional throughout the Bible. In Genesis 17 and 19, a few pages later, God tells Abraham, Sarah, your wife shall bear you a son and you shall name him Isaac and I will maintain my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring to come. Number two, Jerusalem is the most important city in Bible prophecy in the world. Number one, Israel is the most important nation in Bible prophecy in the world. Number two, Jerusalem is the most important city in Bible prophecy in the world. The most important city in the world is not Washington, D.C. It's not London. It's not Paris. It's not Rome. It's not Beijing. It's not Moscow, but Jerusalem. And God declared that Jerusalem would be the capital of Israel over 3,000 years ago and said, once I declare it to be the capital, it will be the capital forever and no one can change that. Many have tried. Now, if you know your history, you know that the Jews were driven from the land of Israel. Two very specific and unique dispersions. Number one happened in A.D. 70. The second happened in A.D. 135, and the Jews were driven to the ends of the earth. And as you study history, many nations, many empires, many rulers, many dictators, many warlords lived in that land, occupied that land, and have. Did you know that not one single one ever made Jerusalem capital? They couldn't. Because God 3,000 years ago gave that city to Israel and said it is irrevocable and unconditional. And then Israel comes back into the land. And Jerusalem just recently, by our former president, along with allied nations, Israel has always known, but the allied nations of the world gave permission to Israel to declare Jerusalem as the capital. Let me tell you something. God made that statement over 3,000 years ago. Historically, Jerusalem became the capital of Israel by the decree of King David. And it has remained Israel's capital ever since. The Bible mentions Jerusalem over 800 times. Are you listening? Number two, Jerusalem is the most important city in Bible prophecy and the world. And in Isaiah chapter 2, listen to what the prophet Isaiah said. 
Because the Bible prophesied that Jerusalem will be the capital city not only of Israel, but the entire world after the second coming of Jesus Christ. The Bible said that in God's eternal kingdom, that he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth where everyone is right with God. That's why I'm not worried about the new green deal because I already read about a Bible deal. God said, I'm going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Man wasn't big enough to create it and man's not big enough to destroy it. It is under the auspices of the almighty God of heaven who has made a conditional promise with Israel. No, an unconditional promise forever and forever. Oh, listen to Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. On the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house, that's Jerusalem, will be the highest of all, the most important place on earth. So Tiff is not saying that Jerusalem is the most important city in Bible prophecy in the whole world. God did. Isaiah did. Jerusalem will be the highest of all, the most important place on earth. It will be raised above the other hills and people from all over the world will stream there to worship. People from many nations will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God. There he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord's teaching will go out from Zion. His word will go out from Jerusalem. The Lord will meditate between, mediate between between nations and will settle international disputes they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks nation will no longer fight against nation nor train for war anymore after the second coming of Jesus Christ Jesus sets up his throne in Jerusalem and will rule and reign there forever and forever and Jerusalem, after the second coming of Christ, becomes not only the capital of Israel, it will become the capital of all the earth. Lastly, and I close with this, the regathering of the Jewish people to Israel is the super sign of Bible prophecy. The regathering of the Jewish people to Israel is the most important prophecy in the Bible, hands down. Number one, Israel is the most important nation in Bible prophecy and the world. Number two, Jerusalem is the most important city in Bible prophecy and the world. Number three, the regathering of the Jewish people to Israel is the most important prophecy in the Bible. Oftentimes called the most significant prophecy or the super sign of all Bible prophecy. Time will not allow me to give you an exhaustive study on this because it's found in many of the prophets of the Old Testament. It's found in Jeremiah 30. It's found in Ezekiel 34. It's found in Ezekiel 37. It's found in Zechariah 10 and several other passages. But let me read one. Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah oftentimes called the weeping prophet. Verse 3. For the time is coming when I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel and Judah. I will bring them home to this land that I gave to their ancestors, and they will possess it again. I, the Lord, have spoken. Two incredibly momentous things must happen in final Bible prophecy before end time prophecies can be fulfilled. Don't miss this. Let me say that one more time because that's a weighty, weighty statement. Two momentous things must happen before end time prophecies can be fulfilled again don't have time to teach on it when you get an opportunity on the youtube and podcast channel listen to a teaching entitled what is the difference between the last days and the end times because i can't tell you how many times i hear that used in pulpits synonymously but they're not the same the last days is different than the end times Before I run down that trail, let me close. First, Israel must be a nation. Two momentous things in the Bible, in prophecy, must be fulfilled before end time prophecies can be fulfilled. Number one, first, Israel must be a nation. Well, May 14th, 1948, Israel was reborn as a nation. By the way, our former president aggressively 
along with allied nations, making Jerusalem recognized in the world as capital. Do you remember what the date happened to be when that was official? May 14th, 2018. 70 years to the day. Next time somebody says, ah, no prophecies have ever taken place in my lifetime, it's just because you're not listening to the right prophecy teacher. Secondly, the Jewish people must return to Israel. As I've already covered, and I have studies on that, I hope at time you'll go and, and search it out. It, it's it's f fascinating to me. I, I don't understand how people can be Christians and never look at Bible prophecy or never find a trusted Bible prophecy voice. When I was a kid, my father used to bring... Uh, there were two in particular, but my father every year brought evangelists into the church who were Bible prophecy preachers and teachers. And as a kid, it fascinated me. It gave me a faith as a child to know that the Bible was not hocus pocus. It was not a religious fairy tale. It was separated from all other world religions by its prophetic content. And so they were dispersed in A.D. 70 by Titus in the Roman Empire and then in A.D. 135. And there they remained until May 14, 1948. In Ezekiel chapter 37, be sure to include this in your notes, verses 1 through 14, that classic passage in the Old Testament Declaring the vision of the valley of dry bones is a prophecy of Israel's restoration. And the reason why it is the valley of dry bones, when you read it, do it in your devotions, the dry bones are restored in stages, which was a prophecy that Israel will be restored in stages. Some trace the beginning of this return to 1871, when just a small group of Jews at risk of death felt called by Yahweh in prayer to return to Israel. By 1881, it grew to about 25,000 Jewish people that had settled there. By 1914, about 80,000 people had gathered there. By 1939, there were 450,000 gathered there. After World War II and the atrocities of Hitler's Holocaust brought attention worldwide to the plight of the Jews, it began to accelerate. And on May 14, 1948, the Israeli Declaration of Independence is made in Tel Aviv and a few hours just before the British Mandate expires. And at midnight, the British Mandate of Palestine is officially terminated and the State of Israel is officially recognized. And do you know who the very first nation was minutes after that declaration? openly declared Israel as a nation, the United States of America. And historically, we have always been their greatest friend and greatest ally. One of the reasons why this nation is going to hell in a handbasket is because we now have politicians that have greater allegiances to Muslim oil than to the nation of Israel. And the Bible said, I'll bless those that bless them and I'll curse those that curse them. Just for the record, don't get all uptight. I hate politics. People always ask me, are you a Democrat or Republican? I am a born-again Christian, and this is my book of allegiance. My allegiance to God is greater than any allegiance. I love the red, white, and blue. If they took 63-year-old ugly men, I'd fight for this nation all day long. But I am here to tell you I have no hope in the White House. My hope is in the Holy House and Jesus Christ and His eternal Word. The sooner you figure out that both Republicans and Democrats are just two heads on the same snake, the better off you'll be. Because one of the things you'll learn as you follow me in Bible prophecy is in the last days, all politicians are led by Satan towards a stage being set for the arrival of a one-world leader and a one-world global order. By 2009, and mark this down because it is a significant date, by 2009, there were five point. 4 million Jews in Israel, 5.2 million Jews in America. Why is that a significant date? Because for the first time since the dispersion of AD 70 and AD 135, for the first time, 2009, there are more Jews in Israel than any place in the world. 
And so the literal fulfillment of Zechariah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel was fulfilled in 2009. Now, there are approximately 6.9 million Jews in Israel. And this is why Ukraine is so important, because Ukraine was one of the highest population of Jews in what we might call the Russian Empire. And Vladimir Putin's aggression. Many of you remember the news where the airports in Ukraine were just shoulder to shoulder, thousands upon thousands of people trying to get out. Those were Jews fleeing for Israel. I close with this. To those who know end time Bible prophecy, this irrefutable, historic regathering of the Jewish people to their ancient homeland is the fulfillment of what is called the super sign of Bible prophecy. I had a Jewish man just recently receive Christ as his Messiah just weeks ago in one of our Lost Lamb outreaches. I had the privilege of talking to him and going through some personal discipleship with him and helping him. But he said, you know what really spoke to my heart the most? When you told me that God would supernaturally draw Jews back to Israel. I have a trip in eight days planned. I'm getting ready to close on a $47 million home in Tel Aviv. I have felt desperately in my heart. I can't shake it. I need to move back to Israel. And it's happening with Jewish people all over the world. It is the super sign of all Bible prophecy. And do you know what Bible prophecy says follows next? The rapture of the church. And the revelation to Israel as to who the true Messiah is. Live every day ready to meet the Lord. Because Bible prophecy is being fulfilled in your lifetime. Xin chào tất cả các bạn. Hôm nay trong chương trình vật lý lớp 11 của bộ sách kết nối tri thức, thầy trò chúng ta sẽ cùng đi nghiên cứu cái dạng số 2, đó là cái dạng xác định biên độ, pha ly độ dựa vào đồ thị. Thì ở trong cái video bữa hôm trước, thầy đã giới thiệu cho các em cái dạng 1, đó là cúng xác định biên độ A, xác định pha, đó là omega T cộng phi, có thể là pha ban đầu, đúng không? Là phi. Hoặc là pha tại thời điểm T, tức là nguyên cái gấp omega T cộng phi. Rồi xác định ly độ X, nhưng người ta cho cái phương trình dao động. Đúng không ạ? À? Thì cái dạng một này nó là dễ các bạn. Nhưng cái dạng 2 này nó hơi khó, nó hơi nâng cấp lên một chút. Đó là chúng ta phải dựa vào đồ thị, chúng ta phải xác định các yếu tố này. Và đây là một trong những cái dạng mới của chương trình à, vật lý lớp 11 của chúng ta. Trong sách cũ... Trong sách cũ, trong cái phần dao động điều hòa thì cái dạng này người ta không có đưa vào, đúng không? Ít đưa vào trong cái chương trình sách cũ, không có trong sách cũ. Nhưng sách mới của chúng ta thì cái dạng đồ thị này, đây là dạng rất là hay, người ta đã đưa vào. Bởi vậy là các bạn phải nhớ cái dạng này, chúng ta phải biết cách làm lại dạng này. Và bây giờ thầy trò chúng ta sẽ trước khi đi làm những cái bài tập để củng cố cho các bạn, thì thầy sẽ đưa ra cái phương pháp dạy cho các bạn như thế nào. Thì trong dao động điều hòa chúng ta đã biết rằng dao động điều hòa là dao động được mô tả bởi hàm sin và hàm cos Tức là x sẽ bằng A cos của omega t cộng phi Đúng không ạ? Và hàm điều hòa này đồ thị của nó là một đồ thị hình sin đây Đúng chưa? Đồ thị đây là đồ thị hình sin Và các bạn muốn biết biên độ dao động là bao nhiêu Thì từ vị trí cân bằng này nè Các bạn coi cái đoạn lệch lớn nhất Đúng không? So với trục X, cái đoạn lớn 